Okay, hi there. So I'd like to show you how to do a little uh, fun kids computer activity. It's a learning exercise, plus it's also Halloween type stuff, and you'll probably enjoy it as an adult as well. It uses a 3D modeling software called Blender, which you can get from blender.org. As you can see, www.blender.org, totally free, open source. Just go to the download link and download either uh, Windows 32 bits or Windows 64 bit. If you don't know which one, just the, the 32 bit works on everything. Once you get it, then uh, run it, and you'll see a screen like this. Press escape. So the initial um, situation or the initial uh, opening is just a cube and a camera and a light. So the cube is in the middle, camera, and a light. What I want to make today is a really easy shape. It's a witch's hat. So a witch's hat is basically a cone. It's a Halloween thing. We'll, uh, we'll make it with a cone, and Blender just so happens to have cones readily available. So uh, when you're in the screen, when you make a new file in Blender, you'll get this cube. Just press delete and, uh, and click confirm with the mouse. You'll delete the cone. This little life preserver type shape is the 3D cursor that's right in the middle of this little grid and it's where you're going to add a shape. You add a shape by going up to add with the uh, mouse, press mesh, and then hit cone there. So now you see you've got a cone. You're basically 99% of the way to a witch's hat already. So some tools that you can use with Blender. This is, uh, this is kind of fun. You can make any shapes with Blender you want. There's plenty of tutorials on the internet, but we'll, uh, I'll just teach you um, little bits here, and, uh, and don't be worried if you don't understand. The interface is kind of complicated on Blender, and by complicated, it's not really that complicated. It's just different from Windows or Macintosh, so you just have to remember a few different ways of doing things. In fact, the new interface, since Blender 2.5 uses all these menus and such, that are kind of normal. Before that, it didn't use any of this. It was it was crazy complicated before, but now it's pretty good. So how you uh, get this to look more like a witch's hat? So this is the little cone right now that you have. Press S for scale, and press Z. Z is up and down. So we'll scale it to be a bit long like that. So if, when you press Z, it limits the scale in uh, the Z direction, which is up and down, and it it highlights it white. So let's make it uh, something like this. You can press the keyboard shortcut of 1. 1 will give you a front view. So this gray bar here is kind of like the horizon. It's the zero, zero uh, height line. So let's press G to grab. Now we can move this with the mouse. We'll press Z again to lock it to Z, and we'll just kind of move it close to, so the bottom is close to the zero line. If you press your middle mouse button and hold it down, you're able to view different angles. So you're just able to rotate your view. If you do the same thing, so I let go of my middle mouse button, if I press Shift now and then hold down my middle mouse button and move it around, what I'm doing is I'm shifting the view. So I'm not rotating anymore. I'm panning the view. I let go of shift and I can rotate. And again, if I want to snap to a specific view, I can press the number pad and one is the front view. And you can press, uh, press five. If you have this front ortho, so ortho is kind of the better one for modeling. Press five again, you get a perspective view. It's a it's a bit harder to model in that view, so you can press, this is kind of like the drafting, similar to drafting. And if you have a roller uh, on your mouse, you can zoom in and out to get in there. So this is, uh, like I said, 99% of the way to a witch's hat. If we use our middle mouse button and look underneath, we can see that there is a surface under there, and there are surfaces all over here. To make a witch's hat, we need a wide rim. so. The way we do that is we press tab. So you see down here, it says object mode. This lets me manipulate this as an object. But if I want to fine tune the inside of the object, like edit, for example, the boundaries and things like that, 
which is what I need to do to make a rim on this hat. Then I press tab. Tab now gives me, it kind of like zooms into the object and gives me access to all the corners which are known as vertices, edges and faces of this and I can now edit it. So it's all an orangey color which means it's all selected. I can press A to unselect all, A again to select all so I can select on and off. Right now I'm selecting vertices. If I zoom in I'll show you. Vertices are these dots that connect the lines. They join lines together. So the lines are called edges, the dots are called vertices, and the area in between all the edges, so these like uh, gray shaded panels, those are called faces. So those are the three words that you need to know in 3D modeling and they correspond to these three buttons down here if you look at my cursor. So right now I have vertices selected so that means when I right click see I'm selecting vertices, I'm selecting these little dots. I can't really select a face, right, for example. But if I go into the face mode then I right click and I can select faces. And then of course the middle part is the lines. I can select edges by doing that. Okay, so I want to select vertices. I press A, A to select none toggles. And what I want to do is I want to select all of these bottom vertices. The way I can do that is I can go outside of them all and press B and then draw a box around them all. B is for box select. So I'm going to go over here, press B for box, and I'm just going to drag with my left mouse button around all of those vertices so I have them all selected and if I look up top see I, that one up there is black so I do not have the top one selected and that's exactly what I want to make a rim and I can zoom out a bit I'll give myself a bit of a bottom view by rotating here I can press E for extrude right now extrude means it's like you're stretching or you're, you're pushing out another shape making it longer so that's what I want to do I want to just extrude a little tiny bit from this a little bit down right so a little bit down and then I'm gonna make that really wide so I press E for extrude and it's, see I can extrude as much as I want but I just want to extrude a little tiny bit maybe okay do that now I'm going to press scale I want to move my cursor uh, maybe maybe somewhere to the rim so then it'll scale along with my cursor. I press scale. Now if I scale sideways I'm getting this rim shape and it's kind of obscuring my uh, my cone but that's fine. When I'm happy with it then I can I can have a look at it. So there is my witch's hat with a rim. Look we're basically already done. Um, That's about it. It already looks like a witch's hat right now. What I can do is, uh, let me just show you here how to color it black. So right now I, I can go to the world. World it looks kind of gray. See this gray shape? That's kind of like the background. So I want to make the horizon color. I think I'm going to make it white because I want to make the, I'm going to make all these colors white. And the reason for that is because I want my black hat to pop out and if I make the sky black it's going to be hard to see my black hat. Then I can go to this with my, uh, I press tab, I'll press tab again to get back into the object. Then I'll press this uh, circle here that says material. Press that, I have nothing here because I have not assigned a material to this shape yet. And there are no materials so I'm just going to press new. So press on this new button then I get a blank material which is just kind of grayish and what I want to do is pick, this is the main color of the material, I want to pick pretty dark black so I don't know, it's up to you, you can experiment the super dark black really is super dark, it's kind of like darker than coal, right? it really is no reflected light so this shows what it'll look like so this looks like a pretty good black I think it might have maybe a little bit too much shine on it, but I think maybe a witch's hat should have a bit of shine. Uh, and the shine should be white. So I have this intensity graph here. I can type in a number there if I want, or I can just 
drag it sideways. So I'll drag it, and there it shows me the preview up here in the circle. That doesn't look too bad. Maybe I will use that as my color. So there, that's all it takes to create a material. It's kind of a satiny black, super dark, pretty perfect for a witch's hat. If I press zero on the keypad, I'm going to get the camera view. So zero shows me this, this kind of dotted area is what the camera is looking at, and this is the bigger one. And I'm clearly not seeing my full hat. To pan this around easily, I can press N, and that gives me this extra set of options. And I press the checkbox near lock camera to view. Press that. I can press N now to get rid of that extra options. Now when I pan around with the shift or without the shift and rotate things, I'm going to see the, the camera is going to automatically adjust. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to have a look over here. This, this actually looks pretty good. You see this light in the middle of my camera? This is going to be like, a, like looking at the sun. So I'm going to press 1. Or maybe I'll just I'll just right click on that, and I'll press grab G for grab, and I'll just move it out of the camera, just somewhere out. Uh, maybe I'll just move it just a bit out, so that it still has some effect. So if I've done this right, hopefully when I render this image, I'm going to see a white background, which is because I've made my whole world and sky white. I'm going to see a dark black hat, and then this light is going to be shining on the hat. It's creating going to create a little bit of a spot. So we render the image by pressing render, render image, and we see nothing. So we've made our world way too white. Uh, go to the world. Okay, ambient color, not white. Okay, ambient color. So this that's what we did wrong. The ambient color is kind of like the just the general light that's around. So like when you're walking out in the nighttime not much ambient light but when you're walking around in the daylight it's kinda like everything is lit up but not from a specific place right it's just just light all over the place so that's what this ambient light is and it was super bright so I'm gonna just turn it down uh, to very low ambient light and hopefully that will that will allow us to see something so there we go so still not the greatest looking. Let me just let me just get that going here. There we go. That looks a little better. So I've turned the ambient color all the way down, and that's 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 left nothing but our light. So now our hat is black. We have a little bit of a shade spot there, and uh, and that's it. We've made a witch's hat. If you want, we can we can right click on that. We press Shift D, we can duplicate it, create a couple more. We'll just press X to move it to the X dimension. Shift D, Y, we'll move it just in the Y dimension. Do a grab and an X, move it in the grab. Now I have three witches hats here. Let me see what that looks like. Render image. Anyway, fun little little thing to get used to blender my kids can do this they're uh, eight and six years old they can do this no problem so this is a fun little getting started with blender the next one that I wanted to do for Halloween is to make a pumpkin which is quite a bit more complicated and we'll spend a bit more time on the materials and getting a, a scene really set up but here we go it's just a hat I mean blender is blender is pretty powerful you can rotate for example Grab this shape, rotate this one, you know, put it upside down. You rotate this one, it's you know just hats flying everywhere now. Render that that guy right there, now you have hats flying everywhere. Uh, press escape. If you were to I'll press one for a top view, if you were to add add a plane. Scale the plane out. Grab the plane, just put it underneath. Scale it again. And make this plane. We'll make this plane a color of 
white like that so you'll be able to see now if we render you'll be able to see there's the plane that we made so it kind of gives a little better perspective and now these hats are kind of flying over top of a plane if I make the plane even bigger it'll kind of uh, uh, so scale this guy even bigger render image it kind of makes uh, uh, something a little better maybe the plane can be more white so I'll uh, in this material I'll make the plane be totally white intensity high I could even make it emit some uh, some lights, make it transparent. Transition. It's very this program is very amazing. I mean, you could make you could make uh, all the the modern uh, animated programs, and it has animation, which I'll show you with the pumpkin tutorial. It's it's pretty good thing to get into with kids, and uh, and they like it. Like uh, my kids were making towers, buildings in our city. We got pictures of buildings, and then we recreated them in Blender, for example. Um, we're going to make a pumpkin here on the next tutorial for Halloween. But uh, here we have a scene with the three witches' hats just kind of tumbling over a plane, and it took us about, uh, I don't know, what, uh, 15 minutes or something like that? So there you go. Get started with Blender with your kids, and uh, and they'll start to gain spatial awareness. They'll understand some of these mathematical principles like vertices, edges, and faces. Learn about rotations, dimensions, the XYZ coordinate system, scaling, all that kind of stuff. So I think there's nothing but good stuff with Blender. Blender.org. Give it a try.